Hey folks, this is Kalani. With the raid to World First over, and with a lot more playtime in Season 3 for both the new raid and Mythic Plus season, it's becoming a bit clearer who the weakest and strongest specs and classes are, which means we're starting to see a lot more class balance and tuning changes, including some huge class buffs and nerfs for currently overperforming and underperforming specs. We also have a lot more information about how to obtain the new legendary axe from Farak in the Amir Drasil raid, and how you can increase your chances of getting your hands on it, and then there are some important updates coming soon, including faster revival catalyst charges. There's a lot to talk about, so let's break it all down. Now before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. Let's kick things off with the class changes because we have quite a few rounds to go over, including some class changes coming with the next weekly reset that have a lot of nerfs for the classes you would probably expect. So to start with, Blood Death Knights will see a nerf to their old set bonus to reduce the bonus damage for Heart Strike and Blood Boil, as well as the chance to proc Vampiric Blood. I guess the old set was still a bit too powerful. Unholy will be getting some very nice buffs by the looks of things, Virulent Plague damage was increased by 15%, Epidemic damage was increased by 12%, Festering Strike damage is up 20%, Festering Wound damage is getting increased by 12%, and then Ghoul Sweeping Claws damage is up 15%, so a lot of buffs for Unholy as we head into next week. Demon Hunters are on the other side of the coin, Fell Rush damage will see a 12% damage nerf, Immolation Aura is also down by 12%, Fell Barrage was reduced by 12%, and then there's a bug fix in there for good measure as well. Resto Druids are going to see some nerfs too, but maybe not for what you would expect. Their cat form damage is getting reduced by quite a bit, so Ferocious Bite damage is down 20%, Rip damage is down 15%, Rake damage got nerfed by 10%, and then there's a 10% nerf for Shred damage as well. So less damage coming out of those cat weaving Resto Druids. Evokers made the list this week with a couple of buffs. Devastation will see a 5% boost to all of their damage, as well as a quick buff to Regenerative Magic to increase their leech, and Draconic Legacy will increase stamina by 8% up from 6%. Beast Mastery Hunters are getting caught in the nerf wave as well, though it's not too bad all things considered. Kill commands from your Dire Beast will deal 30% less damage, and your Beast Cleave damage from Dire Beasts was also reduced by 30%, so you won't get quite as much free damage from your Dire Beasts in the 4 set moving forward. Moving on to the monks, Mistweavers have quite a few nerfs too. Manatee now reduces the mana cost of spells by 25% down from 50%, Upwelling can only stack 15 times down from 18 times, Essence Font Healing was reduced by 10%, Invigorating Mists Healing is down 10%, Calming Coalescence was nerfed to 2% per stack down from 3% per stack, Vivify Primary Healing was increased by 5%, and Ancient Concordance was buffed up to 12%, so quite a few nerfs with a handful of buffs thrown in at the end there. Windwalkers haven't been completely left out this week, they're going to see a 6% damage increase across the board. Holy Paladins have just a few changes to go over, Crusader Strike and Hammer of Wrath both had their mana costs reduced, and they're going to deal 25% and 20% more damage respectively. Priests are up next, and Discipline will be joining the nerf crowd this week with a 3% nerf to all of their healing, and a 3% nerf to all of their damage, which is kind of a double dip really. Not only will their healing get reduced directly, but their damage being reduced will further reduce their healing. Disc has been very strong so far this patch though, so these 3% nerfs shouldn't knock them down too far. And then Holy comes in with a 4% buff to all of their healing done, Burning Vehemence was buffed up to 75% from 60% and the two piece renew casts will be longer for both Serenity and Sanctify. The rogues didn't escape this week's balance tuning either, Assassination will see a 15% damage nerf to Kingsbane and Blindside had its effect chance reduced down to 15% and 30% against low health targets. And then we come to the Resto Shamans. Healing Surge had its mana cost reduced, Chain of Lightning damage was increased by 20%, and Acid Rain damage was increased by 10%. So a lot of buffs and a lot of nerfs, but mostly in the places where you would expect it. A few classes have been doing very well so far in 10.2 and Season 3, so seeing those classes and specs get a few nerfs isn't all too surprising. All of these changes will go live with the next weekly reset on Tuesday the 5th. Now if your class wasn't included in this list, there were actually some other class changes that went live at the start of this week that you may have missed, so let's go over those as well. 
Frost Death Knight saw the most changes, including a nerf to their two set bonuses to reduce the increased damage of Frostworm's Fury by 4% per stack down from 5% per stack. The effectiveness of Frostworm's Fury was also reduced down to 25% and Howling Blast damage was reduced down to 10%. So the two set was less powerful overall, but the four set was buffed up to let Chill Streak bounce three additional times up from two, and the chance to proc a bonus effect was increased up to 35%. In addition to that, Chill Streak damage is up 10%, Obliterate damage was increased by 8%, Enduring Chill Chance to Bounce was increased by 25%, and Piercing Chill damage was increased to 12% up from 10%. And then we also had some quick overall buffs for a few classes as well. Starting with Resto Druids, they got a 3% increase to all of their healing. Shadow Priest saw a 5% increase to all of their damage, so Shadow should be looking a bit better going forward. And then both Affliction and Destruction Warlocks saw a 6% increase to all of their damage as well as pet damage, so hopefully they'll see a bit more playtime instead of everyone hopping on to the Demonology bandwagon. These specific changes went live earlier this week, which means they are already present in the live game, so with this round of changes and the changes coming next reset, there are a lot of buffs and nerfs to take into consideration. Now moving on, we have some nice quality of life updates in the 10.2.5 PTR this week, including faster revival catalyst charges. When 10.2.5 goes live, which should be sometime early next year I would expect, our rate of catalyst charges will increase to 1 per week instead of 1 every other week. By that point we'll have more than 4 charges to work with, so you should be able to get your 4 set completed before 10.2.5 rolls around, but the extra charges will be useful to convert higher item level rewards into tier set pieces to help progress your item level forwards, or you can also use the catalyst to change non-tier set slot gear as well. There are two main advantages to this, the first is that the stats on gear can change. So if you have boots, for example, with really bad stats, you might be able to pop them into the catalyst and have those stats become much better for you. Doing this will also change the transmog of your gear and let you unlock the full transmog that goes along with your class tier set without having to actually get the specific loot with that transmog from the raid, so extra charges are always nice, and getting one per week instead of having to wait two weeks will give everyone more options to play around with, so that's definitely a welcome change. And then to round out this week's quick video, we have a lot more information about how the new Legendary Axe works in patch 10.2, and how you can increase your chances to see it drop. Now that Farak has been defeated on Mythic difficulty, every other difficulty will have a chance to drop the special Legendary Axe. The Legendary is available for Death Knights, Paladins, and Warriors of any loot specialization, so you don't have to worry about swapping to the right loot spec whenever you're killing Farak. And just like the Evoker Legendary from the Avarice Raid, you will have a higher chance of seeing the Legendary drop in higher difficulties. So while you may still see it in LFR when that becomes available, LFR will have the lowest chance and then as you increase the difficulty of the raid, the chances of the legendary dropping increase significantly. So Normal will have a higher chance than LFR, Heroic is higher than Normal, and then Mythic will have the highest chance for that legendary drop. While you can kill the boss on multiple difficulties within a week, the highest difficulty will give you the same chances of obtaining it regardless of the other kills during that week. So doing LFR, then Normal, then Heroic is actually the same chance as just doing Heroic. That's what the dev team is saying anyway, so you don't have to waste your time running on every difficulty available just kill Farak on the highest difficulty you can, and that will give you your best chance to see the legendary drop without wasting your time. Now there are some ways to increase your chances further with greater and lesser embers of Phyrolath. The greater embers can drop from Farak on any difficulty, and when used will significantly increase your chances of seeing the legendary drop in the future. And then the lesser embers can drop from any other boss in the raid on heroic or mythic difficulty, and using these lesser embers also increases your chances for seeing the legendary drop. So killing other bosses in the raid can help you towards your legendary goals as well, but it does seem to be limited to just heroic or higher difficulties for the lesser embers specifically. That means you'll have the best chance of obtaining the legendary if you can full clear the road on heroic or even mythic difficulty, so if you're clearing those higher tiers of the raid, you should see the legendary much sooner when compared to folks who can just run LFR whenever they can. 
After you get the axe, you'll be able to work through a quest line that unlocks its true power, as well as a very powerful on-use effect. But I'm sure for most folks, getting your hands on the item in the first place is going to be the tricky part. But that's all the class changes we have to look forward to, as well as some other important updates this week. How do you feel about the Revival Catalyst charges becoming weekly in 10.25? Is that potentially too late to be useful, or do you have a plan for all those extra charges? Are there any classes that you still feel need some big buffs or nerfs? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, and to all of our members here on YouTube. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every video, with a special shout out at the start of the next video you can find links in the description over to patreon or click the join button just below this video and if you want to see more videos like this make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video thanks for watching folks good luck and have fun and as always i'll see you next time